Um, today we'll be talking about plotting in Python. And I think that's the correct screen. Uh, before I start, um, there will be, um, when I start sharing my screen, there is a, up here, there will be view options or something like that. And I recommend you switch that to fit screen because that makes it much easier for you to follow. Um, I've increased the font size of my of my window. Um, I hope you can easily see everything. Okay, and with that, let's start. Switch over to this. What can you see now? Can you see this plotting in Python that I'm highlighting now? Yeah. Okay. I was just making sure that I um, that I have this the correct um, thing the correct feed, uh, screen up highlighted. Then usually it switches automatically to the window that I've selected, but it didn't do that right now. Okay, plotting in Python. Um, Python is really, we, we use Python quite a lot for um, making things uh, to, to look at model output um, and to compare stuff and plotting and making nice figures is uh, an important part of that. And um, the most important uh, library that Python uses to plot is uh, the matplotlib.pyplot. Basically everything, um, almost everything that you can see do with Python that um, has anything to do with making figures, pictures, and anything else will somehow revert back to this one. So let's start out with the, uh, with importing the various um, libraries. Um, it's custom to use, uh, to use this line matplotlib.vyplotsplt because you'll be using this quite a bit. And um, as typical, there are some uh, abbreviations that have uh, established themselves in the Python community. The same is NP for NumPy, XR for XArray. Um, so I just recommend that you do that. Now in older, um, in older no Jupyter notebooks, you will often see this line, matplotlib inline. What this does is it makes sure that um, if you execute a cell that has some plot, that, that does some plotting, immediately below the cell, it will show the plot. Um, but this has now become um, the default behavior of Jupyter, so you don't have to do that anymore. Um, the drawback of that is that um, it will consume the, the, the uh, picture, so you, have uh, all the all the all the commands that you use to create your plot. You all have to do that in a single cell. If you don't want this behavior, you can use you can switch to a different matplotlib um, uh, driver like tk. Oops. Um, but then you have to use the plt.show command, and it will show in an extra in an, in an, in an external window. So for for um, specifically for for this. I'll use the inline behavior. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, now, of course, to plot something, we need something to plot. So I'm just creating um, a few arrays here. Um, the lin space just needs a linear, linear spaced uh, between minus two pi and pi uh, in 1000 uh, values. And then I'm making a cosine and a, and a sine function of that. And to plot, the easiest way is you can just use plt.plot, and then you say y, and it plots, it plots the graph. So <clears throat> now, but of course, um, these x values here on the bottom are wrong. Um, what it's using is the index of the of the array, so each one has a new in integer. If you want to have the x value properly, we have to tell the plot command the x values. Um, 
And for that, we give it two arrays. And the, and the first it will interpret as the X array and the second one will, it will interpret as the Y array. So this way, this way um, we have a nice um, We have, an, we, we have a nice uh, and correct uh, plot with the correct um, x and y x uh, and y axis. Now, um, in our in this case, x is sim simply a linear array that always increases, but that is not not the case at all. That does ha have to be the case at all. It will simply um, plot always to the next point. So if I get plt dot plot. Um, and say, for example, y and z. As you can see, y was the was the was the sine function, so that goes forwards and backwards, and z is a um, and that is and z is the the uh, is a sine function. So it it creates this nice shape, which probably has a mathematical name that I can't remember at the moment. Um, yes. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Um, a little bit about what it does in the background. Um, the plot function has two main object types um, or classes. That's the figure and the axis. And the axis is a plural, uh, it's, it's, yes, it's a plural. plural. Um, and when the, the, the figure object is basically um, responsible for the overall layout, like where do the different plots go? If you have the several plots in a single figure, that's um, how big the figure is, that's controlled by the figure object. And the axis is the actual stuff that you see. So everything that you see here is, is controlled by the axis object. And to do that, and, and, and when, you, when you run this command, this plt.plot, what actually does is something like this, fig equals plt.figure. And then I can give it op options, for example, fig size. And now, of course, since I've made it bigger, I have to let's see uh, what it does. So, and then, um, I was getting confused. So yeah. So you can see um, with the with the figure, I can make it a little. Let's make it a little bit smaller. So you can see I can change that with the figure, and the axis object. If I if I wouldn't add the axis, then would not pr plot anything because the the it doesn't have anything to plot. And then inside the axis, that's where it would use, where it would, would add um, the, the plot command. So um, generally how I go about my plot is that, that I created incrementally. So that is I, um, Start with the basics, and then I and then I refine it until I have the stuff that I want. So let's go through this. Um, process I create the figure. I use up here six four. Subplot and uh, x y, and let's say I also uh, immediately put um, z in there as well. And um, usually, when you just type this plot, because the, this is the inline driver for the matplotlib, um, it prints this. So what I do is I add the plt dot plot uh, action below it, so that it simply says, okay, I plot this thing and, and consume it this way. I'm wondering why this is. Sure. Okay. 
Oh well. Okay. Let's go back to this. So now we have um, the two plots in here. And um, the first thing I might want to do is I want to change the x-axis. So that's, it says from minus six to six, but um, I want to have um, a nicer, um, a nicer uh, value, a nicer values. So what I do is I um, set the x, x text, ticks, And what I do is um, I say minus two times minus uh, pi two and what you can now see is that that these values are at the correct positions, but of course now they're these weird numbers, so I might want to say the, the I want to change the label as well. And I can do this, I can actually use um, a little bit of LaTeX um, uh, commands. I don't know if you, if you know how this works. from here. Just do double quotation marks everywhere, so I'm just going to use them here as well. Is it error now? You've got zero twice. Uh, silly. So now we have. Um, and you forgot the dollar. Don't end this. So, you see, that's why I go through this and I look at each step along the way to make sure that I. Um, oh, because it's not plot, it's show. Um, that's that's why I always do this the correct thing uh, to to go step by step. Um, so let's say I find this a little bit uh, cramped, so I want to ch uh, change the extent. Extend as it said extent. Uh, so x min x max, y min y max, no, it's set extent. I'm sure. Might be that the extent is is come is coming later when I use the card to pay. options. So now it has been it has been squashed a little bit into the uh, into the center. Um, let's add some. I can also change these two things. So for example, I can do. Um, I can change the t the. I can make this dotted. The second one, and let's say uh, I do this, and I can say the color black. Uh, 
and I can give it a label. And that allows me to say legend. And you can see that it's now automatically created the legend um, for the plot. It's, it's, it's found place down here. Um, by the way, um, both matplotlib, all, all, the, all the libraries that I'm using have, go, have a lot of detail. So um, if you go here and, see, and look at, at all the, if you go to the matplotlib.org, um, you can see um, a lot of examples to go through this. But uh, um, I can set a title. Set title because of course it is. Um, and I can say say an X label. And that way I can go further and further in, I, I can progress until I'm really happy with the um with the plot as it is, and then I can save it. And to save it, what I do is I say plt.savefig, and then I, and then I get, just give it a file name. And it will automatically um, an, analyze the extension that I give, and it will automatically uh, create it in the correct format. So if I do this, and then if I go here, it should create the so. And here's here's my uh, file. So any any questions so far? Okay. Um, I said before that, that a figure object can have several axes. Um, so what I can do is, um, Say a tablet. Now I'm giving it three numbers. The first number is the number of columns. So it, it's it's now creating several plots in the same figure. And uh, the first, let's say I want to have just one column. Uh, it's just one row, but two columns. And this should be the the first one. So now I have this. And I can then say I give the same configuration, and I now say I, I want this one. This should be the second one. And now I have two plots here side by side. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Um, and now I can I can just plot in different in the different things. X zero dot plot x y and Plot uh, x z, and I can uh, use all these commands for these different axis objects to set the um, to set the uh, the title and the x labels and y labels and so on individually. Um, and with Matplotlib, it's there, it's so comprehensive that there are usually many more ways to do this. So um, all the things that I've done up here, 
what I could could have done is I can just do this in a single um, or in, in fewer lines. Uh, I can say um, subplots, uh, and then th then I say the same thing before one uh, row, two columns. And then I say an axis in this case will be an array. So uh, and that should give me the same um, the same output. Ah, okay. Um, I've already done this. Okay, so, but we don't usually want to plot one dimensional data. Often what we want to do is plotting maps and stuff like that. Um, and Matplotlib has four main methods to plotting 2D data. Um, EM show is simply, it simply expects the data to be in a rectangular equidistant grid and we'll just put it on the screen as is. Um, it's it's called EM show because it usually expects to it's usually used for image files so um, yeah uh, P color mesh is more uh, you have you get more control you can get um, more control for irregularly spaced data and then there are contour and contour and filled contour plots uh, two methods for that so again I create I create some um, some data. Now, um, I'm not sure whether you realize what this is because X and Y are, sim are sing single arrays. Um, X, X and Y, Y, let's um, show you. Um, so, I doubt uh, now, what is, so if you look, if they are now two dimensional arrays and if you look at X, X, um, you can see um, you can see that they that that it constantly increases to into in one direction, and um, y y obviously goes in the, in the other direction. Oh yeah, it, it's, with I am sure you can see that the, that zero zero is on the top left because that's the standard for for image files. Always usually um, zero zero is in, is on the I'm pointing to the screen. It's in the bottom, but in EM show it's on the top. But basically, because I make created this mesh grid, I was then able to create um, a new two-dimensional file, a uh, two-dimensional data set, uh, by just creating the the sine and cosine of x x and y y. And I can just uh, say plot v. And that create that that pl that plots the data. Um, if I want to have more control over that, so for example, if if I um, I cannot give EM show simply assumes that these are pixels, so you cannot have you ha don't have any control over over the the axis. Uh, I can use uh, p color mesh for that, and then I can say x y and V. So now you can see that um, my values go from minus two pi to two pi as I, as I created them up here. Um, and uh, contour is similar. Doesn't use shading. And contour F just filled. Um, I can add a color bar to, to um, I'm not sure if I can add it to EM show, but let's see.
something like that. Yeah, you, okay, you can actually add this to, but you can, yeah. You can add this color bar that um, shows which values these are. Any questions so far? I have a question. Um, can you show how to adjust the size of the color bar? Because it's always a problem. Sorry? Uh, how to adjust the size of this color bar? Sometimes if the plot is small, uh, if I want to make the color bar short, something like that. How can I do that? So you want to basically you want to have the vertical the vertical extent of the yeah just of the before, color bar. yeah just before you adjusted the size of the plot you were having a small plot with a big color bar right see that's one of the things where that I don't know we can just have a look in the on the matplotlib site. Um, I have to come back to you um, if I, because I at the moment I, I don't know exactly how to recreate this. I mean, I can use the EM yeah. show but I think um, I think the axis object is actually this big in here. Mm -hmm. Let me quickly check something. Um, sorry, I have to. Yeah, yeah. I have yeah. to. I have to defer this for a moment because I don't know how to create a color bar to and to how how to get control of this um, color bar at the moment. Okay. Um, yeah. If you can give, if you can give us, uh, if you can send send in as a, a, an example where your color bar is um, is mismatched, okay. and then we can have a look um, what's going on. Okay. So you just send it to the help desk. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to create, have a look at, as the real world example um, for this.
So let's have some real worldwide data set. Um, so um, in here, this is, this is just a file that I grabbed from one of our access uh, runs. Um, and it contains um, the air pressure at sea level and X and Y wind components. And I want to plot both of these on top of each other. So um, I can just say uh, pressure equals ds. Air pressure at sea Okay, so now pressure, you can see it's still a, a three-dimensional array, so I, can, I can't just plot it. No, if I, I can plot it, but then it does a histogram of it. So X, X array does have this, this plot feature. You can just use it to, to, to plot something, but it generally it tries to make some sort of estimates about what you probably might want to do. So you can just use it, but you will quickly see that this is, that this is going to be, um, not going to be what we want. So um, what we do is we'll, um, just the first time step, and that gives us a two dimensional data. And this you can see um, uses uh, the P color mesh, um, including it adds a, a color bar with the, with the pressures, it says latitude, longitude, and so on. Um, but uh, in order to get con more control over it, what we do, what we're going to do is we will create our own figure the same way we've done it before. And then um, we tell it to, we tell X array to plot in there. So we say here, um, And then we say, and so now we have um, we have we have control over this axis, and that gives us um, a few options. Mainly, um, to, for example, to use uh, Cartopi. Uh, Cartopi is a library that gives us control, that, that makes uh, world map plots uh, available. So it has, um, it has a really um, nice website, or co again, with lots and lots of examples. Um, it has a different set of, um, of projections. The plate carré is probably the standard one where just everything is rectangular and equidistant. Um, but you can go through this uh, and see all these different um, plot types. And all we have to do to, um, for example, to go to go to this, to plot to plot something in this is. Um, let's give t, take this out for a moment. We can just say here the subplot. Words and that's a dictionary, so projection CCRS dot interpret load home scene. And so we now have we, we now have this uh, this projection, and this has added a few more um, options to the X as AX as well. So if I now, for example, can say ax.coastlines, it will add um, all the coastlines of all the coastlines of the world. Um, however, if I now simply add the pressure levels again, um, you see that 
this doesn't fit, this doesn't matter out again. And that is because um, the access needs to know how to transform um, the data that we're supplying with this with this command into the map that that Cartify has created. And for that, we used to we need to use the transform command. And here, um, we have to say what the data is, what the data looks like. And the data is equidistance rectangular. So we, here we use the plate carry. And yes, okay. Um, it's getting into trouble at the, at the uh, poles. So I'm in interrupting this here. I've had this before. So we say, um, I'm just, I'm just slicing off the poles. again. Yeah. So now you can see that it's a little bit bigger. Twice as big. And now you can see that it has created this, um, it has created this, uh, converted the data that we have on the global map onto, onto this map. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going back to the plate carry and I want to plot both the, um, both the pressure and the wind. Um, if you go back to the, to the, and, and I want just want to do that over Australia because I'm, I'm, I'm that I'm the kind of person. If you look at the the air pressure, air pressure is time latitude longitude, but x wind and y wind are time latitude zero longitude zero. So what I'm now doing is um, I'm first creating. I'm just, let me quickly copy this out of this out of my draft here. I'm copying, uh, I'm creating a sub, a sub data set where I'm basically just saying, okay, this is just the data for Australia. And um, I've, um, I've created these, uh, these slices for both la longitude and longitude zero and latitude and latitude zero. And then I can get, um, the pressure uh, at sea level, as well as the, the winds, the wind components. And because the wind is a two, it is again for, is, is of course, um, I want to have these this arrows. Uh, let's go. Three. Put a central latitude in there. No, I don't think I need to. X the coastlines. Uh, X that set extent. 
And um, again, I'm copying these from my notes. They're actually a little bit smaller um, than these values up here because the slices, um, of course, only accept, because, uh, accept values that are inside this. If I were to use the same values, there would be a, an edge around it where there is, where there, um, the last point would be lost. Um, so, and now, let's see if that works. Telling, um, I'm using the X array uh, plotting to plot this thing. And so, okay, so this is, let's make it a little bit smaller for the screen. Yeah. So you can see that this is Australia. It has, it has the, the, the air pressure at sea level. And now, because as, as I said, as we looked before, we can just put another plot on top of that. Now to make an arrow plot, um, it's, it's called a quiver plot, x dot quiver. The quiver contains lots of, lots of um, arrows, I think. And the command for that is x, y, and then um, x, and I went and I want to um, and basically you you have to you, you can look at this um, here in the matplotlib um, you can look at the at the at how it's how you call it um, pointing at the screen again why am I pointing at the screen again you cannot see when I'm pointing at the screen so um, you can use the you, you can see the the how it's called here. Um, and uh, you can see now I have the wind arrows. I am not a climatologist. I'm not a meteorologist. I'm a little bit surprised that here the winds seem to be parallel to um, to the to the to the pressure, but um, I'm just here to tell you how to plot, not how not not whether that this makes meant, uh, this makes sense. And of course, I could I could um, I uh, I can also add other stuff. For example. Um, I can use add uh, feature to say I want to have dot, uh, rivers button. So we have here um, the Murray Darling Basin. Up here we have other rivers that have been added to this thing. And this feature is um, going back up here, is part of this cartopi.feature um, set. Um, there aren't all that many features. So you have rivers, lakes, um, uh, borders, and I think three or four others. Um, you will find them here in the feature. Yes, so so here you have land, ocean. Oh yeah, so that's just makes the land this brownish color, the ocean um, bluish color. Coastline, uh, which we already did with the ax dot coastlines. Um, borders, lakes, and rivers. There are any other? I don't know. I don't think there. There's anything else there. But it's still useful. So, um, any quest? Any other questions? Paul, 
Oh, yeah. Could you show us how to combine a scatter plot with a caterpie map? A scatter plot. Okay. Uh, just go let me quickly. Um, It shouldn't be too hard. I mean, um, if I were to simply, uh, uh Oh, yeah. Yes. Um. Does anyone know the? Let's let's make let's make some let's let's simply make some values up. So um four, one five one two one uh some I'm just making up some values in the in the range that we're looking at. Zero. And um, there's a lock X, so let X lock. lock X and lock Y. probably have to do this. So now here are these the three val the three scattered things that I've just added. Um, yeah. Is this is this helping you or yes that's great thank you. Okay. Um, again, if you have specific questions, you can either um, you can either come to us uh, on the on the help desk, or you can um, come to our uh, drop-in sessions, which actually is next week. Um, we're trying to make a drop-in session on the first of uh, on the first Wednesday of the week, um, where you can just come in with your questions, and then we'll try to get someone to um, help you out and uh, go through the details with you. And um, the plan is to do that every first Wednesday of the week. We've all, so far, we've only had one of those sessions. But if it turns out that they are popular, then we'll keep continue them. Otherwise, we'll probably uh, otherwise they will run out very soon again. So um, yeah. Any other questions? Nothing. Everyone's really, really quiet. So it's uh, yeah. Well, it's it's five minutes to two. Um, there's a quick, something in the chat. Oh. 
Ah, of course, because I had had I was on full screen and didn't see this chat. Was that what you were looking at, at Claire? Ah. Yes. So um <laughs> uh, you have a question about control of legends in a plot. Um, do you want to um, do you want to be more um, specific about that, or do you have a specific question, or do you want to come back next week to our drop-in session? Just give me a thumbs. See you next week. Good. Okay, anyone else? Hold on, guys, a really quick question. Um, I can probably find this online, but I was just doing it, so I thought I'd ask. Um, <laughs> just with, um, so some of the graphs that I'm making, they automatically make the axes in like scientific notation. Is there a way that I can just say, print the number? <laughs> So, um, do it in scientific notation. Um, so you, you can always, um, I'm trying to figure out what the what the issue is. So, um, it's just like if I'm plotting something that's quite big, um, it's like my y-axis is in scientific notation, but I'd rather it just be in standard form. So here we have something in scientific notation yeah. uh, in the x-axis. Is that kind of what you want to look at? Yeah, yeah. Now we can, what you can do is, um, you can again, we can just grab our axis uh, object like this. Uh -huh. And then, just like I did it before. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Um, uh, I can then say something like, um, three, four, six, six, eight, ten. I don't know if that works. We'll probably have to
would know this, this almost certainly. Is it like set y ticks or set x ticks or something? I mean, I did this just before, what? Set X ticks. Yeah, I think you wrote just set ticks, maybe. I didn't. Okay. So now I, I have the, the numbers here. Okay. Okay? Cool. It works. Um, I had another question, but mm -hmm. it might be better for next week. I'm not sure. I just, when I'm kind of changing the central latitude, uh, the central longitude of some map, sometimes it gives like down the center, um, it's like a white line, like it doesn't have data. So I didn't know if there was a way that I can kind of fill that in. I can leave it till next week though. It's There's almost certainly a, a, a way to fill this in. Um, I know what you mean. It's like the, the data um, doesn't, it doesn't roll around. Yeah. Um, exactly. I know what you mean. Um, there almost certainly is a way to, to add this data. Um, at the moment, I don't know. I don't know from memory what it, how it works, but uh, I, I am, I'm certain there is a method. Okay. So send an email. I'll come back next week. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look at this. So apparently Scott has, has shown some, some way to do this, uh, maybe, in, maybe in our blog. Um, if you go on to um, where was this? Yeah, so climatecms.org. Yes, uh, there might be there might be something in in these um, in in these things as well. Is that what you meant, uh, Steffi? Yeah, she's she's nodding her head. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Um, then thank you very much for coming. It's three minutes past two, so perfect time to end. Um, have a good time. Have a good day. And